Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Jennifer Brick. Let us now... Talk about the guest of honor, your new book entitled Career Glow Up, How to Own Your Ambition and Create the Career of Your Dreams. I've read it cover to cover, Jennifer, and absolutely loved it and will be writing an Amazon review. What I love is that it is so user friendly Mm -hmm. and it is beautiful. It really is. It is like a journal. Is that what you were going for? Yes. So the publisher that I worked with, they do workbook format. And I originally wrote this as a traditional business book. And they actually approached me as I was like finishing my first draft. And they're like, Hey, have you ever thought of writing a book? And I actually have a friend who published their book called About Burnout with them. And I loved her book. And so I describe this as like business book meets journal. Because Andrea, how many times have you read a book and been like, that book was so good. There was so many good points and then implemented zero of them and forgotten them all right away. So what sold me was that this was not a book that you would just read, be like, oh, that was good. And then it wouldn't change your life. I wanted to change your life. And it's not super heavy lifting. Everything is broken down so intricately. Like I spent months curating it down into exactly what you need to do only what you need to do and making sure that you have the space prompts and knowledge in order to fully implement it. So when you work through this book, it ends up becoming your career success guide. And it's something that you can look to, you can refer to, and it gives you the action steps because that was one thing that I've always turned to books for answers. I'm just, I'm one of those nerds and who doesn't love books anyways. But one of the things that frustrated me was I read a lot of business books for women like back earlier in my career. And there's so many good books on the market now and not, you know, totally be like, oh, like these were all awful. I learned a lot from the books that I did read. And there was a lot that I did end up taking and gleaning and things like that. But a lot of them left me with like, this is what you like. How many books have we read that it's like, you need to find a mentor. Okay. How do I find a mentor? And I remember reading and I, again, I don't want to like, say anything bad about it because I it really inspired a lot of my ambition was the book lean in and it talked about the importance of having sponsors and mentors, but like you never go and ask, but it never actually told you how to get them in the first place <laughs> and what they would look like. Because one of the things that I didn't realize was that mentorships and sponsorships are not formal agreements. I have many mentors that I've never used the word mentor to them to their face. They've never used mentee or protege to my face. Maybe they wouldn't agree. Maybe it's (laughs) one-sided. But I didn't realize like how informal those would be, but that the most effective relationships were going to be the ones that would emerge. Again, like my theme is always authentic and organic because if something feels fake, if I am pretending to do this, if I'm showing up in a way that doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel good and then I don't do it. So this book is focused on finding the ways and the approaches and the things that do feel good. And you'll want to do them. (laughs) Absolutely. And what I especially love is that there are a lot of opportunities in the book throughout Career Glow Up to cultivate 
self-love. And we're actually doing this interview on Valentine's Day. (laughs) Yay! Which is, in my opinion, about self-love first and to help you build success habits. Yeah. Yeah. Know how you show up every day. Like it's the little things that you do. And I think it's the, it's your expectations and the way that you think about yourself and what you're bringing to the table, like your expectations become your reality. So if I expect really good things, if I expect to have a high impact, if I expect to be visible in my organization, then I'm going to become those things because my actions are going to be in alignment with my inner beliefs. And I know that's like hippy dippy woo woo, but it really works. Like it, it's grounded in psychology as well. But that's one of the things that like, I wish that they had taught us in school to really focus on these things. Like I didn't know to keep lists of things of accomplishments and progress, and then what to do with those lists. When I started making them, like, you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't think of until I thought of them, that would have saved me so much time. So as I said earlier, like, this book is the book that I needed when I arrived in New York, when I realized like, you know what, I think I actually want to do something with my career. And it wasn't become a CEO. I wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to become like this big, important person. But I realized I wanted to make a big impact. And I realized I wanted to do more than just be someone. I wanted to be someone. I wanted to have relationships. I wanted to do good in my industry. I wanted to do good for my company. I wanted to do good for my customers. And so this is exactly what I needed at that stage in my career that would have made my climb up the corporate ladder even faster. I actually think it is the book that any young woman could use at the very beginning of her career as a model. It's almost like having a mentor in a book. Yes. Because yes. this mentor is you, is guiding them through yeah. best practices to cultivate self love, build success habits, build those lists of yeah. successes yeah. and whatnot that will help you evolve in your career. Yeah. And building self awareness of the ways that you're awesome. Because I think, especially for women, We're so socialized to focus on what's wrong with us. Like my body's the wrong size. I don't make enough money. I don't have the right handbag. Like we are so focused and we're so trained to focus on the things that we don't have that we really need to consciously and intentionally focus on the things that we do have and what we are bringing to the table. Because I think that this is true for every single person, not just women, blanket statement, but I think especially women. I think when you know how freaking awesome you are, you are not going to settle for anything less than extraordinary in your career and in your life. You're not going to take a low ball offer. You're not going to take a crappy job that doesn't treat you well. There's going to be so much that you avoid, (laughs) but there's going to be so much that you get out of it as well. You actually call it our unique awesomeness quotient. Let me try that again. Unique (laughs) awesomeness quotient or UAQ. How can our listeners, Jennifer, figure out what their UAQ is, especially someone who is early in her career journey or hasn't even started it yet? Yeah. So the UAQ is essentially the nexus of things that you are naturally good at things that pe- that people already notice about you. So think about compliments that you've gotten, questions that people are asking you already, things that people come to you for, as well as your interests. And it's in the middle of those things that you're going to find your UAQ. And it's not just one thing. It's not just one skill. Like I was never going to be the best customer trainer in the entire world, but I could be the best customer enablement professional who could build scalable and profitable training success organizations. That was something that I can position myself to do based on and with technical ability. So it, it shifts with you. It grows with you over your career. Everything in this book, I still do myself, <laughs> even though, you know, I'm, I'm well into my career now and getting up there in years, but it, it is in the, the next. So obviously, if you want to really deep dive into it, it's I have a whole chapter in the book dedicated to it. I do have a starter kit for anyone who's curious about it. You can get it on my website. Beautiful. And the website is? CapDecaSolutions.com. And that's spelled C-A-P-D-E-C Solutions.com. 
Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T4C. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.